Hi, Hassani and Danielle. For someone that is planning marital bliss on the near horizon, I wanted to know exactly what advice do you give to newlyweds? Now, that's a phenomenal question, okay? So I'm gonna give advice that I wish every newlywed couple knew before they said I do, and that is get premarital counseling. In fact, I would say before you get engaged, get pre-engagement counseling. I think what happens is once you've made the decision to get married and you have a date set and you're working towards that, you know, that wedding day, you know, premarital counseling is more of a checkoff. You've already made the decision. And so no matter what comes out in those sessions, no matter what comes out, you're like, okay, well, we'll deal with it. We'll get through it. And then you just race to that day. Mm. And I think a lot of times there are a lot of missed opportunities in terms of what you need to address and resolve in that relationship, because sometimes it's done too late. A lot of times when we get phone calls for people who are getting married, literally they want to start counseling two, three months prior to the day. Mm -hmm. And there's crisis there's, they're dealing with. And, you know, it's interesting. Once you get engaged, it's almost like that's like the fork in the road right there. Either we're going to move all the way forward or, or we're not because of issues. Mm -hmm. And so I would say get into a good program. We provide a very thorough, comprehensive unpacking of what a relationship should look like before you say I do because yeah. we work with so many couples who are in crisis. So we know what to tell you to uh, avoid, to prevent, to yeah. not do, and to begin to do so you don't wind up in a crisis situation. Yeah, and I would, I would only add on top of this that historical honesty is so important and that's one of the major reasons why couples end up in so much crisis is because they did not go and have that marital counseling, which is like excavating and digging and yeah. unearthing all of the problems and not just the problems that were in the relationship that you discovered however long you were dating, but the problems that you came into the relationship with that rear their ugly heads later on down the line. And so it's so important for you both to be on the same page about that, to have 100% transparency and be willing to have somebody lead you through that process so that when you start your marriage, your first day, you are starting at ground zero. There's nothing behind you that's going to come up and scare you to death. There's nothing to worry about. All you have to deal with is what's in front of you. Also, so definitely get into some that's counseling. A, that's a great, that's an excellent point. Um, also, I would say this. If you live geographically far or at a distance from your partner, because a lot of times people are bi-coastal, they live in different states, they've been engaged, and the main, I guess, the main focus of their communication has, I'm sorry, of their relationship has been communication because they've been distant. We always encourage, listen, move in close proximity of each other for a few months before you get married because you only know that person in a two-dimensional way. You only know them through phone, through Zoom, through Marco Polo, through FaceTime, and occasional visits back and forth. But when you're around someone long enough, it transitions from interview because that's what a conversation is question answer question answer question answer and then you're engaging in conversation and you're knowing them in a two-dimensional way to now being around them more and experiencing them i think it's important to experience that person you want to know what their habits are their idiosyncrasies are you want to know about their family their friends their environment how they do what it is that they do those things are critically important because that's what you're going to be dealing with once you say i do and so I think spending time in physical proximity with each other is critically important. And then interviewing family. And I don't mean like take out a notepad and pen and start asking questions and interviewing. But observe. Play detective and act naive. Right? Mm. I want you to write that down. Play detective but act naive. Because you want to know what's not being revealed. Because we're all onions. And people peel back their layers little by little by little when they're comfortable. Yeah. And I'm going to tell you, it goes back to that historical honesty, Danielle. A lot of people don't tell all they need to tell. We put our best foot forward because that represents the best of who we are. And what that means is that we're hiding that other foot with the crooked toe, the bunions, and the corns because that represents the worst of who we are. And so we say if you're going to be married, and this is my last point, 
you should be together for a minimum of one year. You want to see that person in all four seasons. How do they act and show up in spring, summer, winter, and fall? Like, you want to see them in their good times. You want to see them in their bad times. You want to have conflict. You want to have an argument because you want to know emotionally how do they react and respond. You want to talk about shared values, okay? Our, uh, your relational code of ethics. Do we think the same way? Do we have the same belief systems, the same creed, the same uh, uh, a way of thinking as it relates to important things? What about the future? Do we want to have children? What about finances and career? Like there's so many different things that you can do. One of the books that we have uh, that we give our clients is Intellectual Intimacy, Questions for Couples and Couples to Be, because you need to ask some serious questions and know all the answers as much as you can before you say I do. So you're making a decision that makes sense.